Hi everyone, Creveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to be looking for a very particular object. This object is visible at this time of the year, it's above the horizon, but it will stay pretty close to the sun. Uh, it will stay potentially visible in our skies for a couple of months yet. So we're going to push up to sunset here on the 20th, uh, here on the equinox. Uh, I have talked a lot about the equinox in previous videos, so although this will be the night of the equinox, that won't be our focus for this show. What we can see here on the 20th, first off, is Jupiter and Mercury. Uh, we should, there we go, see the moon in the sky as well. So the moon's over there in the southeast, coming up to full, nearly full, on the night of the equinox. Mercury and Jupiter are both there right above the sun. And if you've been watching the channel for a few months now, Jupiter is very close to sunset compared to where it was a few months ago. And in a few months time, Jupiter will disappear behind the sun. The sky is still quite bright. Mercury is visible just about, but it is a very tricky planet to spot. Just about here, the sky's getting darker. We can still see Jupiter. Mercury hasn't quite set yet. And if you do have a clear view of your horizon with no trees like this, uh, especially if you're at the coast where there is only a flat ocean in front of you, if there's also no clouds, this is really one of the best times to see Mercury. It might be quite low in the sky, but the sky is also darker, which helps Mercury to stand out just a little bit. Now, looking at the sky here, we are looking at the sky in the city. There is a little bit of that sunset glow as well as light pollution. But if we take a look uh, almost above Mercury and to the uh, right of Jupiter, there we go, it popped out pretty quickly. I'll zoom back out just a little bit, but there we go. This is, that little faint dot there, is Comet 12P Pons Brooks. So this is a comet that is visible to the naked eye, and I will be the first to admit, this is pretty tricky to see with the naked eye. It's technically visible to the naked eye, we can still see it there, even when we're zoomed out a little bit further. But this comet hasn't reached its closest to the sun just yet. And just like the planets, as they orbit around the sun, when we see them um, sort of at their fullest, with a lot of the side facing us lit up by the sun, that is going to make them brighter. But as this comet brightens, it's going to move in this direction, bringing it pretty close to the sunset. So we'll go back to the equinox just to get it a little bit easier for me to see. That should be it. There we go. And if we step forward a few days, you'll see that it comes right under Jupiter. Now, we are in the unfortunate position of having a tree here in, uh, in this view, so that's going to get in the way. Luckily, I can get rid of that, so we'll get rid of the ground here. And there you can see it as that little dot. And again, because of how low this is going to be in the sky, similar conditions to the ones that would give you a good view of Mercury. Uh, making sure there's no trees in the way, uh, going to the coast or to a very high area up on a mountain will help as well. We'll pull back a little bit and pull back a couple of days. We'll get Mercury potentially back in the sky. Here we go. And we will move out to the countryside. Comets, in general, comets can be quite faint. They vary a lot in brightness, so comets will usually be well, they'll always be much, much fainter when they're further from the sun. As they come into the sun, closer to us, closer to that source of brightness, they are going to brighten. But even quite bright comets, comets that are clearly visible to the naked eye, they can still be a little faint, and their tails will often be uh, fainter than their coma. The bright kind of nucleus of the comet is surrounded by dust and gas, the coma, and that stretches out into the tail. So these parts of the comet can be quite faint and difficult to distinguish, especially in the city where we do have that light pollution. Right, here we go. We've pushed out to the countryside. There's plenty of more stars visible in the sky. And as the sun starts to set, I'll get rid of the marker just to make it clear. The name is even still coming up, as Tellarium is definitely recognizing this as an object that you can see with just your eyes. And here, because the comet is still making its approach towards the sun, we have a little bit of time before it gets too close to the sun for us to easily see it. It won't appear to move directly behind or directly in front of the sun from our position. If we take a closer look here, yeah, there's that lovely tail stretching out behind the comet. So the tail of a comet will always face away from the sun. The tail of the comet is mostly generated by the solar wind, not really by the motion of the comet. 
So as the comet moves in towards the sun, the tail will stretch out behind it as we'd expect. But as the comet comes around the sun and eventually starts leaving uh, its perihelion, as it starts moving away from its closest position out into the solar system, the tail will still point away from the sun and that will end up being the same direction that the comet is traveling. So the tail of a comet can end up pointing in the direction it's going, not just uh, not just trailing behind its motion, but trailing behind it relative to the position of the sun, away from the sun. Uh, taking a slightly closer look here, you know, we've got Jupiter, we've got Mercury, there's the Triangulum Galaxy and the Andromeda Galaxy, two of our closest neighbours, our closest and our second closest, give or take. Uh, Andromeda can be seen with the naked eye as well under very good conditions, but at this level of sunset, there's still a little bit too much of a glow. If we move a little bit later, you can see here, well, the Andromeda galaxy, but also how this comet, Pons Brooks, it stays pretty visible in our sky. It's almost circumpolar, not quite for us here in Ireland, but in this position, it will appear to dip under the northern horizon and then pop back up again in the morning. Because of the way this comet moves, and of course this is true for many things in our solar system, it can be tough to really follow it through the sky, with daylight blocking things out. So we'll get rid of that. And here we are uh, looking at the day, not quite the middle of the day. We'll come up a little bit closer to midday. Oh, that went a little bit too fast. <laughs> we'll come up a little bit closer to our physical midday here on the 20th. Here comes the sun. And there we go. So we can see that the comet is up almost uh, above the ecliptic as we'd see it here. It's going to come around get super super close to Jupiter and the moon here on these dates so we're uh, into April already and we can see this lovely collection of famous objects that really narrow crescent moon the comet and Jupiter but unfortunately they're going to be really close to the sun as it's setting so especially for us here in Ireland that's going to be pretty tricky and if we move back a couple of days just about here we can see that the new moon is right there almost in front of the sun and then we have the comet and Jupiter. If we move through the day a little bit, hopefully I'll still be able to see this happening. Great, there we go. So the sun is just setting there as we come into April. If I was to bring back the atmosphere here, it's just about visible in the countryside, in the city that would be very tricky to see. And because it's so close to the sun, unless something were to block out the sun, you're not going to see it easily. Of course, if you're in the United States or certain parts of Canada, certain parts of Mexico as well, you will be able to see, or there is a good chance you'll be able to see this comet because something will block out the sun. There is a uh, solar eclipse coming up on the 8th of April and there is a chance that you might see the comet during the eclipse. Bright planets like Jupiter and Venus are often visible during these eclipses. Being able to see a comet is a bit of a rare retreat and this could be called a once-in-a-lifetime comet, depending on your expected age. Uh, it says up here a short period comet. It's about 71 years. I'm not sure if it says the exact orbital period in this layout, but it is about 71 years. And so if you see this comet now in, you know, your 30s or 40s, there's a good chance you won't see it coming back around in 71 years. If you're lucky enough to be brought out to look at the eclipse at, you know, four or five years old, then you might see this comet and see it coming back around. So this is considered a Halley type comet whose periods are between 20 and 200 years. 71 years is pretty long but if you catch it early in your life you might live to see it come back around again. So that's going to be a particularly nice comet. Now we will get rid of the atmosphere again because comets especially with long periods like these, they take a long time to come in close to the sun, get around the sun, and start moving away from it again. So although the comet did pass by the Earth, uh, it passed reasonably close to where we are, and by reasonably close I mean maybe 300 million kilometers away from us, it's still pretty far, uh, it's reasonably close in space. Uh, I believe this comet has been described as an Everest-sized uh, comet rushing past the Earth, but you know, in space, 300 million kilometers or so is pretty short. Space is mostly empty. If something is in the same 300 million kilometers space as you, that's surprisingly close. But, of course, 
we're not in any danger from a comet that's going to be so far away from us, really. If we move through the days here, we can see the comet kind of comes down under the sun there and starts to move away out into the solar system as we come up to uh, June and July. This is really when the comet will be closest to us, but because it's closest to us and not closest to the sun, we're not getting as much of that light, and that's going to make it a little bit trickier to see. So this is a really great time for us to see it here as it's coming into its approach to the sun, reaching its perihelion, its closest point to the sun, and then closer to us, but won't necessarily make it much easier to see. So we'll pull that back up to, uh, we'll come back up to the equinox. Uh, we might as well, given that this is going to be, we'll go a little after the equinox so that you have time to prepare. We'll get back into evening time. We'll get our atmosphere turned back on. We'll turn over here. Uh, we will also come back into the city. I, I do want to make sure that this uh, this view is as achievable as possible for as much people as possible. And if you can see it in the city, you'll definitely see it in the countryside. If you can see it in the countryside, there's no guarantee that you can see it in the city. So here we are. Sun's just setting in the city a couple of days after the equinox. And the comet is just over there. Won't quite be visible to the naked eye. Although, barely. There's a little faint dot there. It's barely visible to the naked eye in the city by the looks of this here. Once we zoom in a little bit, of course, it's certainly visible. Uh, it's a little bit past being over the west here. We're going to take a quick look through a sample telescope just to get an idea of what a normal telescope would be able to see in this. A 60 by 70 telescope, not particularly big. It doesn't have any multiplying lenses. It has a normal ocular there. This is how it looks through binoculars. Now, granted, these are some of the biggest binoculars. They're huge. Uh, you need a tripod for binoculars like those. But even going back to smaller binoculars, you can absolutely see a little bit of fuzziness there, the coma, even if you're not really seeing the tail. Once we get back to, yeah, these are fancy uh, oculars. So now you're definitely seeing a little bit of the tail stretching away behind all that astrometric information. Here we go, a good ocular on even a reasonably small telescope, and we're starting to see that tail stretching away. Now, this is going to be tricky to catch. It's happening at sunset. You've only got so much time to see it. Here's a Celestron C5, a nice sized telescope, but not crazy big. And we're definitely seeing that tail stretching out from here in the city. So that's something nice coming up over the next couple of days. I will talk about that comment again when I am talking about the eclipse in April on the 8th of April. So that will be a couple of weeks away. And I might bring it back up again when it's coming its closest to the Earth later this year in summer. But for now, and for Comet 12 Ponds Brooks, that is the show. So I very much hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to like the video if you like this information. Comment if you can. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.